actually looked into implementing a digital transformation for an organization what i initially thought thought was like there is going to be a full of algorithms and other things and only that is going to help with the digital transformation but when we actually went and uh, started doing the work it was completely different because most organizations they have processes but uh, they are not well defined or they are not completely digital or there are some pain points with the process itself like they are not effective enough and we can't get enough data from what they are currently following so to give you an overview of what the actual process looks like so we start with defining and streamlining processes and then we devise methods and strategies to collect data and then we build a pipeline which is going to ingest all of the data and keep it in a single source and then we use that data to perform descriptive analytics or predictive analytics and we can also build machine learning models based on that data and then we can implement an ai solution to help with the business and finally i'm also going to throw some light on how it is advantageous and how it has improved the organization overall so defining and streamlining processes and first we uh, analyze what the existing practices and processes in the organization are uh, and since we are taking into consideration the use case of a transport logistics they have multiple systems they have like a system for managing their customers like a crm and then they have an uh, uh, erp solution and then if there is going to be some incidents like uh, there could be a accident or uh, there could be a robbery that took place and to manage all of this they have separate systems so each of the systems have their own processes and some of these processes are manual especially expenses that are captured during the trips the driver he usually notes them down in a piece of paper and he gives them the receipts along with that paper so that they can uh, get the expenses done so as you can see this is not entirely digital it is partially digital and partially manual and also there are a lot of pain points in having such processes as part of an organization uh first we don't get all the necessary data that we might need and secondly we the accuracy of that data that which they are providing is questionable so initially we define and streamline processes and then we define if if we found some flaw in the process or if it is not full proofed then we change the process and then make sure that people follow it and once we have implemented all these areas then we concentrate more on automating the process so for example the location of the vehicle it doesn't need to be manually entered or uh, people don't have to make a phone call to say that i'm somewhere here close to this big place and other things we can have a gps solution that can automatically send the location of data at, like location of the vehicle and also in addition to that we all get more information like the speed of the vehicle uh, whether there were any harsh braking harsh turns and all that and uh, once we have have all the processes set in place then we'll have to monitor whether people are actually following it so getting people to follow process is again a big task uh, there will be some deviations there will be some tech debt because people are not familiar with technology and we'll need to get, give some incentives and define that this is going to be the process and they'll have to stick to it and so monitoring whether the process is being followed or not is also crucial and then we have to devise methods and strategies for collecting the data that is being generated so whether it's going to be ex information on expenses or uh, 
the location information of the vehicles or it could be planning and information about planning for the trip and all these processes they always have valuable data so we need to devise methods and strategies for collecting them so digitalizing is a key thing here because manual process they can always be overridden or they there could be deviations and it could there is a large possibility of an error being made while taking in data so digitalization is going to be helpful and then like i said there are going to be multiple systems from which we require data so we need uh, external integrations uh, like other applications in third party apis uh, in this case specific to transport logistics we'll have we need map data and traffic information of the routes which the trucks are taking and all these information they need to be collected and here we employ iot on two stages one is for the gps location tracking uh, which is going to be an iot device which connects to the internet and pushes location information to the server and the user and then we can get it on our data system and then we have video and audio streams so video is like the dashboard cam of the truck and we have cameras on all four sides of the truck and we'll be getting live streams of video like what is happening around the vehicle and uh, what uh, what is the driving pattern of the driver and then uh, we also have a camera that's facing the dashboard uh, towards the driver to monitor his or her uh, state like if they are uh, distracted or if they are concentrating on the road and other things and then we build a, a data pipeline for ingesting data so we need to set up multiple connectors that is going to connect to different data sources it could be an api base it could be a file system or uh, it could be simply events that are being pushed occasionally and we need to build a pipeline for ingesting all this data and then we need to process it so there will be outliers and there could be missing data so we need to devise a strategy to fix all those outliers and uh, missing data and then we store it to a single data warehouse from which we can use that data for uh, analytics and cognitive computing so the overall setup looks something like this so we have the data pipeline and then the erp system is going to push its data into the pipeline expenses system is going to push and then the instant management then we have the vehicle giving us the feed on video or image and then we have the gps information and then we have external integrations and then we also provide uh, like a mobile app or web application which the drivers and other people on the site can use and we collect that information as well digitally and then we process it and then we store it on the data warehouse and next we implement the analytics based solutions so since we are covering the transportation logistics the data can be used to automate route suggestions so this specific organization if it's carrying a large uh, parts like wind turbines that needs to be transported then the route is actually pre-planned so we can use historic data to actually uh, give them good suggestions based on their loading points and unloading points then expense forecast and uh, services there could be wear and tear on the parts especially on the tires so we can proactively tell them that okay this vehicle, specific vehicle has run for so many kilometers and so many hours uh, that there is going to be considerable wear and tear and you'll have to change this so that you don't suffer any breakdowns during the next trip and then we give them financial statistics that is the profit loss their uh, forecast of expenses and what their projected profit or loss will be if they continue with what they're currently doing and then video or image processing we use edge devices that is going to 
process the video in real time and going to, is going to send it back to the server from where we can uh, capture events and uh, any other deviations from the normal. And then we have driver and uh, vehicle performance reports. These are useful useful for data uh, like data informed decisions mostly. So in case I need to uh, give an award to a driver saying that uh, he has performed well in the past uh, year, then I can use this information to actually decide on that. And then we have income expenditure, then outcome prediction. So outcome prediction is again, very important because I, I as an organization, I'd also want to know what is going to be an outcome if I'm going to change something in my process. So it could be I'm uh, giving more uh, financial support to the driver, or it could be uh, something like uh, more uh, uh, like more tech enabled vehicles or uh, high performance vehicles. So what is going to be the outcome or uh, if I make some change? So that is important. And then AI is again, uh, it gives more uh, insights on what's happening and suggestions on what could be done to make some improvements. And then finally, we have the advantages and improvements. So like I had said, this is going to be a foolproof and cost effective solution that we are reducing wherever possible. And uh, this is going to be, there's going to be less room for errors. And then we are going to use cognitive computing to actually tell, uh, identify where the wear and tear or the tires are go going to need changes and uh, how and one more thing is like on the monitoring side as well if the vehicle is over speeding or uh, if there's harsh braking and harsh accelerations then it will immediately call the driver uh, telling him to slow down or asking him to take a break so all these things are covered under cognitive computing and then we have preventive maintenance where we say this part is about to go uh, reach the end of life and uh, we'll need to switch it before the next trip. And when we do all this, the we can see about 40% savings in their monthly operations because we have uh, we are future sighted and we don't react to a problem. We have a proactive way of telling where the problem might be and how we can fix it beforehand itself. So that is the main part where we get, get uh, the savings. And then we can also have a more efficient monitoring of the working of the entire organization end to end. So with this, I conclude my presentation. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to.